the cervical part of sympathetic trunk the cervical parts of the right and the left sympathetic trunks are situated on either side of the cervical part of the vertebral column and behind the carotid sheet where it encloses the common carotid as well as internal carotid arteries and in front of the prevertebral fascia and this is the anatomical location now let us talk about the formation of the cervical part of the sympathetic trunk the trunk is formed by the fibers which emerge from the segments t1 to t4 of the spinal cord and then ascend into the neck and the gray rami communicants are present but remember the white rami communicants are not present in the cervical part of the sympathetic trunk now let us talk about the relations and first is the anterior relations the anterior relations are as you can see here the internal carotid artery as well as the common carotid artery the carotid sheet as well as inferior thyroid artery all these are the anterior relations and the posterior relations are the prevertebral fascia longus capitis and cervical muscles and transverse processes of the lower six cervical vertebrae and all these structures forms the posterior relations now let us talk about the ganglia theoretically if you see approximately there should be eight sympathetic ganglia corresponding to the eight cervical nerves but due to the fusion there are only three cervical ganglia they are superior middle and inferior cervical ganglia let us talk about these ganglia in detail the first one is about the superior cervical ganglion the superior cervical ganglion is the largest of all the three ganglia and it is a spindle shaped ganglia and about 2.5 cm long next is about the situation and the formation the superior cervical ganglion it lies just below the skull opposite to second and third cervical vertebrae behind the carotid sheet and in front of the prevertebral fascia it is formed by the fusion of the upper four cervical ganglia there's a reason it's the largest of all the three cervical ganglia and what about the communications the superior cervical ganglia receives communications with the cranial nerves 9 10 12 and with the recurrent laryngeal nerves what are the branches which arising from the superior cervical ganglia as i already mentioned that all the three cervical ganglia and the cervical chain of the sympathetic trunk does not uh, receive the white rami communicants but it contain the gray rami communicants so the gray rami communicants pass into the ventral rami of upper four cervical nerves and the internal carotid nerve arises from upper end of the superior cervical ganglion and forms a plexus around the internal carotid artery so whenever you see plexus around internal carotid artery remember that these plexus are nothing but arising from superior cervical ganglion that is from the upper part apart from these plexus which are located around the internal carotid artery these plexus supply the dilator pupillae so some of these fibers form the deep petrosal nerve especially for pterygopalatine ganglion and other give fibers especially for the ciliary ganglion the external carotid branches of the superior cervical ganglion form plexus around the external carotid artery so some of these fibers from the sympathetic roots of the otic as well as submandibular ganglia and the pharyngeal branches which are arising from the superior cervical ganglion take part in the formation of the pharyngeal plexus and the left superior cervical cardiac branch goes to the superior cardiac plexus while the right one which goes to the deep cardiac plexus and these are the branches arising from superior cervical ganglion middle cervical ganglion the middle cervical ganglion is extremely small it may be divided into 
two to three smaller pods or sometimes maybe absent and what is the location this middle cervical ganglion lies in the lower portion of the neck in front of the vertebra just above the inferior thyroid artery and behind the carotid sheet and how it is formed formed by fifth as well as sixth cervical ganglia and what are connections it is connected with the inferior cervical ganglia directly and also through a loop that winds around the subclavian artery and this particular loop is called as answer subclavia and what are the branches which are arising from the middle cervical ganglia the gray rami communicants are given to the vertebral rami of fifth as well as sixth cervical nerves and the thyroid branches which are arising from the middle cervical ganglia accompany the inferior thyroid artery especially to the thyroid gland and they also supply the parathyroid glands and there are like tracheal and esophageal branches and the middle cervical cardiac branch is the largest of the sympathetic cardiac branches and it goes to the deep cardiac plexus and next is inferior cervical ganglia the inferior cervical ganglion is formed by the fusion of seventh and eighth cervical ganglia and this is often fused with the first thoracic ganglion and then known as cervical thoracic ganglion or stellate ganglion and it is situated between the transverse process of the vertebra c7 and the neck of the first rib and it lies behind the vertebral artery and in front of the ramus of the spinal nerve called as c8 and what are the branches which are arising from the inferior cervical ganglia the gray rami communicants are given to the ventral rami of nerves c7 and c8 and the vertebral branches from the plexus around the vertebral artery and there are subclavian branches form a plexus around the subclavian artery and an inferior cervical cardiac branch from the inferior cervical ganglion goes to the deep cardiac plexus and this is about inferior cervical ganglia let us talk about the clinical anatomy related to the cervical sympathetic trunk an injury to the cervical part of the sympathetic trunk produces horner syndrome and it is characterized by ptosis which is drooping of the upper eyelid meiosis which is constriction of the pupil and hydrosis which is loss of sweating on unilateral side of the face that is on the affected side and anophthalmos and retraction of the eyeball and there will be loss of cilio spinal reflex that is pinching the skin on the nape of the neck does not produce dilation of the pupil generally it is a normal phenomena and this is generally called as cardinal features of horner syndrome and this particular horner syndrome can also be caused by the lesion within the central nervous system anywhere at or above the first thoracic segment of the spinal cord involving the sympathetic fibers and by this we completed the clinical anatomy of the cervical part of the sympathetic trunk and we completed in detail about the sympathetic trunk as well as and the detailed anatomy of the superior middle as well as inferior cervical ganglion